What is good? We're back with our guy, Austin. How you doing, man? Good, man. Happy to be on. How's it going? Good, good. You're, you're coming off a, a little Vegas trip, so uh, hopefully you're, you're doing all right and not, uh, not still under the influence, or, or maybe you are. So, uh, uh, but, but today we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to get some buy, sell holds on this version of it. We're just going to kind of go buys, um, you know, all the buys and holds and all those shows are pretty much the same. Uh, it's, you know, kind of must avoid, must fade, smash, yada, yada, yada. So uh, we're going to give you a couple of guys before the season starts here that that we'd go after and, and trade for. And I got a couple of different versions of guys, depending on where your team's at. Looking to have a fun little conversation with Austin. You can find Austin on any platform of choice at Austin Abbott FF. Um, he's out there putting out a lot of content. I saw you just drop some rankings on, and you can find that on your link tree on the Twitters. And some interesting rankings there. I was I was digging them. I, I thumbed through them a little bit. Make sure you guys go check all that out. Uh, but today we got a little a little buy action on this episode. So um, who you want to start? Who who you got? Yeah, man. Let's get into it. I want to talk about Najee Harris right away. So today yeah, so we're going to talk about real, real quick. Yep. Didn't see that coming from you. I thought you were going to be an anti Najee guy, so I'm interested in the in the sell here. Pitch me. What do you got? Now, oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> see, I've always been a big Najee guy. I love Najee coming out. I feel like I'm in an island, though. I feel like everybody mm-hmm. in the world has always hate. Or sorry, not always hated Najee. It was it was after his unreal rookie season that he got the hate because yeah. of one reason: his yards per carry, right? The inefficiency. Mm-hmm. And look, man, I'm just going to come out and say, like, I cannot tolerate all the Najee slander. Um, I, I can't tolerate it anymore, uh, mainly because it's just genuinely inaccurate. You know, Najee Harris had the most rushing yards in Steeler history as a rookie. Okay. So we're talking, you know, Najee Harris having more rushing yards than like Le'Veon Bell, Franco Harris in their Jerome rookie Bettis. seasons. Uh, Jerome Bettis was actually a Ram. Oh, uh, right, right, right. But um, anyway, 1,200 rushing yards to be exact, right on the dot. 74 receptions, 10 touchdowns. He capped off an absurd rookie campaign, right? That I mean, Najee Harris was just, he was a monster right out of the gate. 381 total touches, 1,667 total yards. Oh, and he didn't miss a single game, okay? Like, that's kind of important, right? Right. Um, but people will really be mad about his 3.9 yards per carry. Right? Is there room for improvement in his efficiency? Sure, absolutely. But, you know, guess what? There's room for improvement amongst everyone's game. You know, you got to look at the big picture. Najee's a beast. He was the RB3 as a rookie. And people really want to complain about Najee's, like, quote, unquote, down season last year. Um, But everything went wrong for Pittsburgh last year, okay? They Mm -hmm. missed the playoffs. Kenny Pickett still, uh, statistically, and I know you're not going to love to hear this, right? He was darn close to Zach Wilson from a uh, pure statistical standpoint. Najee played with a steel plate in his foot. For the majority of the season. And and you know what? Najee still finished as a top 15 running back. He had over 1,200 total yards, over 1,000 rushing yards again for his second consecutive season and still has not missed a single game in two years. He is the only running back that we can say that about. So when you think about the word dur- durable, right? Najee Harris is literally the epitome of that. Okay. Right. Um, you, you cannot put a price tag on durability. You just can't. And Najee's tough as nails player comp is Joe Mixon. He is another huge back six one. Um, I don't think this is accurate. Cause I think he's closer to like 230 pounds, but I saw on sleeper, he's 242 pounds. So dude's literally like almost the same exact weight as Anthony Richardson. He's just a specimen. Okay. Uh, just to put things in perspective and Najee Harris since entering the NFL, he has the most carries with 579, just shy of 3,000 yards in two years. And I mean, isn't this exactly what we want for our fantasy assets? Right. No, I think I think uh, two things that you, you hit on there was was durability in this in this world right now where everybody's so worried about the, the running back and playing. And, and you know, we got to fade him because they're always hurt. And he, he hasn't been. I mean, he has been, but he but he played and showed up and maybe it wasn't quite the results you necessarily wanted. Uh, week in, week out. Uh, but you know, as you saw, as he as he got better and and healed through the season, that was preseason. He got hurt, you know, so he he kind of played through that and was still 
fine enough. Yes, the the amazing receptions that were there from Big Ben's last year when he was basically Tom Brady of of this year of just a check down, get it out quick kind of machine. And, you know, obviously that was helping with the inefficient line. Well, this line play got a little better down the stretch last year. And you saw Najee uh, really starting to exploit that. And, I, you know, again, I know the efficiency uh, – bros you know don't don't like uh Najee and his yards over expected and yada 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 but I you know I'm I'm I like guys who are efficient at staying on the field and efficient at scoring fantasy points and that's all Najee Harris has basically done um throughout his his career his young career so far and and you know we we see this offensive line improve in the offseason and again down the stretch Kenny Pickett improved down the stretch um you know this is he's kind of going into the offseason taking taking this team um, as his, where it was, you know, questionable coming into last season. So a lot of positives with Najee. And, you know, I know there's a lot of Jalen Warren banging the table, but, you know, Najee was hurt through half of the season, at least last season. And Jalen Warren still didn't take the job away from him. Like the Steelers are an organization in old school roots. And I know nobody likes it, but how many years did you guys pound the table for Pollard? And I, I look at the Cowboys kind of being the same kind of franchise, like, as far as old school and their roots now they've they've since pivoted and and maybe the Steelers will pivot after this but we have no um there's no record that indicates that Tomlin's not going to use the one back and use the hell out of him and I like Jalen Warren it's not anything against Jalen Warren I just think that because he was effective in his carries like there were some games down the stretch where where Warren got some more carries he had like 12 carries in one game down the stretch well Najee had like 24 or 26 in that game and had a bunch of yards and scored uh, a decent amount of fantasy points. So Najee was was good in those games too. So I, I just, I have a hard time with the Najee hate too. And it's like, look, when you get into these third and these fourth rounds of ADP or your startup or whatever, like there's not many other guys, Any if you want a running back there that, that you can say, hey, this guy, I'm, and that's going to be a common kind of theme. And what I'm going to say too, of, of the guys that I'm picking is like, there's not many guys that I'm counting on being the lead guy and getting most of the work if healthy. And that's one thing I think you can count on Najee being. I, there is no way that Jalen Warren's coming in here with a 50-50 split this year. It ain't happening. Uh, no, so. no disrespect to Jalen Warren, but he is nowhere even remotely close to the player prospect, anything that Najee Harris is. He will never be. Um, Najee's got 10 plus touchdowns in each season, right? He ranks top 10 in opportunity share, carries, and red zone touches last year, right? In his quote unquote down year. Uh, and people still want to call him inefficient, but he low key was 10th in juke rate. He had over 100 plus evaded tackles, which ranked fourth in the NFL while having a steel plate in his foot okay so like yeah. just think about that man like that's right I, <laughs> and he's a really good receiver which i don't think anybody gives gives him enough credit for like that that ravens game where he basically won the game at the end with with burrow mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. like he made a sick grab in the corner of the end zone i know he, yeah. he's he's a good he's a good receiver and again draft Jalen warren too i'm not saying don't take Jalen warren like if i can get Jalen warren in the 18th round and i got Najee down or, or don't have Najee, like whatever. Like I'm down to take Jalen Warren. But once again, like you guys, everybody wanted Pollard to take over Zeke for so long and, and it finally happened. But he sat on your bench being, you know, overdrafted for a few years there. Um, and, you know, it was the same. I feel like it was the same kind of deal where look at how efficient this guy was. Well, the Steelers don't care. Uh, I think Jalen's got, got the backup role locked down and is going to spell some Najee uh, here and there. But you know, as it, any yeah. other back in the league is basically, you know, they're every other like ET is what what's that going to be? They they already told you that they don't want that to be 70, 30. That's going to be at least 60, 40. It would seem with tank like Ramondre, like he, he could be on my buy list a little bit, even though I've been pounding the table for him all offseason. It seems like they want to get somebody else in the mix there. Like, I don't really, you know, so anybody around this area outside of like Eckler, because uh, we're talking our ADP, it's it's ETN, Josh Jacobs, Eckler, Najee Harris, Kenneth Walker, and Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard, and Nick Chubb. Like, there's really only two names, three names that stand out there. And, you know, I, I, those other guys around there, they're all splitting carries. So Najee is, is is I think, just a, a workhorse. And I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm glad that uh, that he was on your buy list. Um, yeah, I'm happy to hear that. And for what it's worth, Najee Harris has proven to show up when it matters most. He dropped to 21.3 fantasy points and 30.6 fantasy points in the fantasy championships back to back years. So he's truly been a league winner the past two years, and he's going to be a league winner again this upcoming season. 
but now you can actually get him at a discount, right? Najee's ADP right. is third round, the 306 right now. And considering that the Steelers are an improved offense, Najee's locked in for 300 plus touches. He's a pretty good bet and he's a good value at his current ADP. So like more power to you. You should be in a Najee. I'm in a Najee. And uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm a big Najee guy. So yeah. I, I hope I hope I convinced you or anyone listening. Yeah, you want you have to convince me, but hopefully you convince some people out there. But most people don't want to hear it, so uh, they're just rapid, rapidly typing in the comments that you're an idiot. Uh, but I'll be an idiot right there with you because uh, you know whatever yeah. we'll we'll uh, menage uh, a little later. So um, I'm going to go with a same kind of vein there of a player for my buy. And obviously if you're, if you're not a contender, whereas in Najee, I feel like you could go either way with, but if, if you're not a contender, maybe this isn't for you, but if you're anywhere near contention or, or you want to get over the hump uh, for a running back, I'm not sure there's one I trust more going into this year than Nick Chubb. He's been just automatic pretty much year in, year out. The, the, the knock has been, uh, you know, the pass catching ability or the pass catching the, 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 opportunities to catch passes because every time he does it he doesn't look bad at it he looks just fine at it um but they've always managed to have somebody else there uh last year there was uh 1172 total offensive snaps available for which nick chubb was on the field for 660 of and kareem hunt was on the field for 491 of them i don't think jerome ford is going to be on the field for 491 snaps i like jerome ford I will draft Jerome Ford on every team I have because I do like Jerome Ford and I think there's a good opportunity here um, for his. But that number is going to be way down. Kareem Hunt had 41 targets and 35 receptions. I I think majority of that goes to Nick Chubb this year. I think he's just going to be on the field an absolute ton, just like we were talking about Najee being on the field a ton. I think the catches all go up. I think he has the ability to catch. And then, you know, just across all of his numbers, he's – basically in single digits on just about every single one of them. He's third in attempts with 302. He's third in in total yards for last year, 1,525. Ninth in yards per attempt with five. Um, And then if you filter that to 50%, which the filter I usually use is 20%, but 50% of 349 carries, he goes to fourth in yards per attempt, basically adding more attempts. 12 touchdowns, that's good for fourth. Yards after contact, he's third with 1,050. Yards after contact per attempt, he's sixth. Missed tackles, number two, uh, with 83. Uh, 10 plus runs, 47, number one. Design runs of 15 or more, 23, number one. Um, you know, breakaway percentage, 34.6%. That's 12th. Number two in first downs rushed for, and uh, I think, believe it was number two in elusive rating. That's a PFF stat. Um, and then the third rated uh, running back out of PFF's grade last year. Um, so, he, he's locked up in the contract for two more years with the Browns. This offensive line is is the number two PFF offensive line coming into this season. Whether that's accurate or not, like I believe it's a top 10 line regardless, uh, which is, you know, what you like. You, you think Deshaun's probably going to take a next step. You think this offense is probably going to evolve a little bit, you know, and it's just you go through his his career game log. Uh, 2022, 5.0 a carry, 300 attempts. 21, 5.5 a carry, 220 attempts. 20, uh, 5.6 a carry, 190 attempts. 19, 298 carries, 5 yards per attempt. 18, 5.2 yards per attempt, 192 uh, overall attempts. Like This guy has just been as consistent as you could possibly want, and the only downside is that he maybe didn't quite catch as many balls, and I think – He's got just as good a chance as any to be RB overall one this year. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you're in contention and you're looking to win, uh, Nick Chubb would be uh, a guy that I would be uh, going all in for uh, and trying to to acquire. Um, Like I said, locked up for two years. He's a little bit older. and I know we like to not get too involved in older running backs, but if you're going for it, I think I think he's your guy. So uh, what do you think? Now, before I comment on this, what would you pay in terms of draft picks? Let's talk. Let's talk twenty twenty three. Okay. What what picks would you give up to acquire Nick Chubb right now? We, What's the most you would pay? Superflex. Uh, let's do both. Let's let's start with one QB and then we'll we'll do superflex. In one QB, I mean, I, I would give you, you know, like just as far as just one single draft pick. I mean, I, I'd go I'd go as high as as you know, one, four for sure. Um, that, that's, okay. and I would, I'd probably add a two to that. Um, if, 
if I'm trying to get Chubb and, and trying to go all in and win. Um, so that's basically Bijan, Gibbs, and and JSN. If you want to, if you wanted to put those three guys first and and say, hey, I'm because those guys are, are, are a round or two ahead of him in our ADP. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that that would kind of make sense value wise that, that 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 should be about right. But if I had to add, you know, a, a 25 two to that, I'd be fine with that. Um, so the 104, you're talking like maybe Jordan Addison, maybe Addison or, yeah, or, QJ, Addison maybe. or, or Q, Quentin Johnston or Flowers, whoever you yeah. like there. That's kind of like the next group of three there. And uh, in Superflex, what, what would you pay? Um, I guess you'd probably just move it back to, to you know. Like 106? 106? 106-ish. Yeah. 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 Take, I'd probably, I'll take the three quarterbacks. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I'll take the three quarterbacks and then the three, the the two running backs and the, yeah, so 107. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I felt like there was a drop off after 106 because you got the top three quarterbacks in CJ Stroud, um, A. Rich, and Bryce Young, you know. And I may even go into some of those quarterbacks if, depending on how my build is and if I'm, if I'm feeling good, if I have three good quarterbacks, like, fuck it, like, I'll, I'll, I'll YOLO this bitch to try to win. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. And I, I, I think Nick Chubb is going to give you a really, really good chance to be uh, at least a top seed going into the playoffs. Once you get into the playoffs, there's, there's, you know, some luck always involved in some fantasy football. Um, the best that you can do is try to control your destiny into going into the playoffs um, and, and get that by. So, yeah, that was a good response. I like that. Uh, to tell you the truth, this is going really well so far. I'm, I'm happy that you chose Nick Chubb because I'm pretty high on him. And I definitely lean. He, he was one of the guys I was considering uh, to put down as my buy for, for this episode. Um, yeah, I Nick don't think Chubb, you're going to like my next guy, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, Nick Chubb, his work ethic is just unmatched, right? Um, mm-hmm. the, you know, what he does in the gym, what he does in practice. And honest to God, what he's done on the field he, he's just essentially one of one. I mean, when I think of a pure running back, just a great quality runner, Nick Chubb is the first guy I think of. There are other guys that come to mind like Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor, Derek Henry, but Nick Chubb is the first guy that comes to mind, man. I've been so high on him ever since he came out of Georgia. I love that the Browns use their second round pick and he's just succeeded every single season. I think the first year of his career he actually had over a thousand yards in the final game and had like one final carry and got tackled for like a minus four yard uh, rush. Yeah, I think he had like 996 or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. And like, I'm sure that still bothers him to this day, but uh, he, he's, he's so darn good, man. He's so darn good. I mean, what do you have over 1500 rushing yards this year? And, and yeah. uh, you know, it's funny. It feels like this is his floor. I don't mean 1500 rushing yards. I just mean like a t- an abundance of rushing yards, right? Imagine right. if he could, catch passes, which, which I think he's perfectly capable of. I think he's probably a fine pass catcher. Yeah. It's just, it's a matter of game script and um, utilization. I think the Browns have just not necessarily had to target him, but with the departure of Kareem Hunt, I mean, you, you said it yourself, you know, you think all those vacated touches will not go to their new backup in Jerome Ford. And I think you're a hundred percent correct. Yeah, I mean, I think he had 30, Chubb had 33 targets for 27 receptions. So, you know, I, th- I think you could pencil him in for 40 receptions this year. And, Dude, even 50, like he could right. absolutely hit that mark. Right. So I, I, I feel really good about, about, about Chubb. So um, who, who, who else would you have on your list here? My second and final buy, Brees Hall. I love Brees Hall. So, Hard Knocks, right? It's going to be exciting to see him on Hard Knocks. I, I'm just excited to see the Jets. I think it was a good choice. There's a lot of, you know, big names. Of course, you have mm-hmm. Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, so, so many guys. But anyway. You're not a Jets fan, right? You're no, in Jersey. No, no, okay. no. Okay. You're a Colts not, fan. Yeah, right. don't, not much better. But yeah. it's, <laughs> it's actually uh, really bad right now uh, with that whole JT fiasco. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, Brees Hall, man, he was exciting. He was electric. And he was arguably the dynasty one prior to his injury. I don't know if you remember, but he was getting all kinds of love back then, right? He tore his ACL week seven. He popped off. He had a big touchdown run. He had over 100 rushing yards week seven. And um, so Brees Hall, through his first six weeks, weeks one through six, his 17 game pace, 202 rushing attempts, 82 targets, 50 receptions, 252 total touches. Mm-hmm. 1,040 rushing yards, which would have ranked 12th. 
uh, 580 receiving yards, which that really surprised me. That would have ranked third. When I think of Brees Hall, like, I, I, you know, I love Brees Hall, have nothing but positive things to say about him, but I don't think of him as top three uh, reception yards by by a running back. I did, I did not expect to see those numbers. That really surprised me. Uh, 1,620 total yards, which would have ranked sixth. 10 total touchdowns, which would have ranked in the top 10. I mean, Brees Hall in his first six games had proven to us the whole, and the whole world that he was the man, right? 276.3 fantasy points. That was a 17-game pace. He would have been the RB7. And remember, the Jets traded up to get him, right? The Jets usually don't do that. I feel like they've been very conservative and boring, and they've missed on so many picks in the past. But this is just a new front office. This is a new GM, and I like what they're doing. Um, they drafted Brees 36 overall from Iowa State. He was the top running back drafted. Uh, 5'11", 217 pounds. I'm a big measurable guy. They really matter to me. And uh, in this case, right, he checks both boxes, uh, weight and height, perfect. Um, his let, Let's talk about a little bit of his workout metrics. So he ran a 4'3", 40 time. And look, 40 is kind of overrated in my opinion, but if you're fast, never a bad thing, right? If you're athletic, never a bad thing. That ranked 96th percentile, right? Brees Hall literally ran in the four threes. Like that's that's scary. Uh, he was 98th percentile speed score, 95th percentile a dominator rating. His workout metrics per player po pro profiler were basically perfect. That's where I got everything off and not a sponsored ad, but check out player profiler. I love the site, man. They have some great information, some yeah. great analytics. I've um, been holding it down for a minute. And, um, it, you know, it was equivalent to making a my player in Madden, like yanking all the attributes as high as possible. That, you know, that, that's Brees Hall, 80th percentile co college target share. His player comp, take a guess. Take a guess who Brees Hall's player comp is. Le'Veon Bell. Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it just, it gets better and better. Like Brees Hall is so darn good, man. Uh, we want all our running backs to be efficient. Brees Hall was number one in the NFL in yards per touch. Juke rate, he was also number one. He's the epitome of elusive. Number three in yards created per touch. Breakaway run rate, number two in the NFL, the epitome of efficient. Once again, like he did all of this in the first six games during his rookie campaign. You know, he just he just proved to the world like he was the man right out of the gate. And Aaron Rodgers has supported an RB1 in four consecutive seasons. Sure, Aaron Jones has been awesome, but I promise you, Brees Hall is going to be better. And when you look back, it's wild that Brees Hall fell to 36 overall when you got guys like Jameer Gibbs going 12th. No disrespect, but Gibbs is not the prospect or player that Brees Hall is. And, yeah. you know, I, lo I love Brees. Uh, he's much closer, in my opinion, to being the Dynasty RB1 than being the Dynasty RB4 in my eyes. And I think he's going to remind everybody this year. Yeah, I get. Uh, for me, is, is obviously the injury. I, I think if he would have finished, he would have probably finished. He would probably be the RB one, and because he had finished the season, and Bijan maybe hasn't done it yet, so maybe he mm -hmm. would be the RB one. Uh, but mm -hmm. is it is it more so that there could be a little, you know, window opening here for for a buy potentially? I don't even want to say low because it's still going to cost you a lot. But since there's a lot of Dalvin rumors, or if Dalvin goes there, obviously we're playing dynasty. So would that? influence your your pick i i would assume that that would be a, a window where it's like hey i'm gonna i'm probably just gonna if anybody gets down on Brees, i'm gonna buy in so i was assuming that he he was making your list because of maybe some of these rumblings a little bit that's my exact thought process there's two things it's the dalvin cook rumors which i believe will be true i think he's going to be a jet and I feel really bad for Dalvin Cook owners because I promise you that is not good news because he's going to be the backup by midseason at the absolute latest. Dalvin will not be the man in New York. It's going to be Brees Hall. He was drafted, you know, he was they, they traded up for a reason to get him. Um, but I think it would be a wise, logical decision for the Jets to bring in him for real NFL purposes, right? They would be right. the top. They don't duo. care about your fantasy team. Yes, of course. And um, unfortunately, you know, that's reality for you and me, but it's okay. There could be worse problems <laughs> in life. Um, but the other reason is not only are some GMs probably a little scared that Dalvin could enter New York, but the other thing is the injury, right? And I think you have to take both of these reasons and go buy Brees. And I don't even care if it's a little bit of a discount, go buy him, go get it. You know, yeah. this, is, this is the cheapest he's going to be. I promise you.
Yeah, no, I, I, I like it. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. And maybe if the news, you could send some out now and when the news hits, maybe, maybe get, get on it and, and try to, uh, try to acquire some breeze. So I was just actually talking to big co about this, uh, yesterday or today about, you know, when you, when, when can we get this, this, a uh, little bit of a, a possible window on some, some panic selling breeze. So, uh, I like it, uh, just a good little uh, thing to point out there that we're not, we're not scared. We're not scared. Dalvin's not scaring us off of Brees. This is dynasty. Brees is still young. He's coming off an injury. Um, you know, obviously we, we would love it for the whole Rogers era to be dominated by Brees, but he's coming back from an injury. So you can kind of work him in slow. This is what the jets probably should do. Rogers gave back 35 million. Hey, if Rogers wants some say, that would be my only pushback is maybe Dalvin and, and Brees are more splitting time for, for most of the season. Once Brees is back healthy, just because it might be what Rogers wants. And I think he's going to have a little bit more of a heavy hand of what he's allowed to do. But I don't I don't I think Brees is undeniable. So um, I would I would go along with you there. So I got one more and then I got a couple couple of little ones I want to throw in the end that were in consideration. I'm going Miles Sanders with this one. I know. I feel like you're uh, maybe maybe weren't a Miles Sanders guy. I don't know. I'm probably lower than you are, but um, I'm not like necessarily totally out. Um, but I, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I mean, it just goes back to exactly what we talked about with Najee, exactly what we just talked about with Chubb. Like we get to a certain point in the draft, uh, and if you want a running back, it starts to just get really questionable. And like you can, like I said, even in that in our ADP, which is super flex tight end premium. You know, you got Travis Etienne in the fourth, which, you know, I think Etienne's great, but how much? What's the usage going to be like? How much is Tank going to eat into it? They've already stated, like I said before, like they don't want him at seventy percent. They'd probably rather uh, carries a uh, percentage of the backfield touches. They maybe rather see him at like a sixty, so it's a sixty forty or maybe it's fifty five forty five. Then you get to Stevenson. We don't know what the hell exactly the Patriots are playing in there. I love Ramondre and Etienne, but we don't know. Eckler, sure. I, I I just you know gave Chubb my love. Um, Pollard, I'm I'm fine with. You know I think we're gonna be all right. The Cowboys don't seem to be bringing anybody in. I think Zeke is still in up there. Kenneth Walker in in the range of of guys of, of running backs above them. And it's like I don't you know I don't really want to draft Kenneth Walker where I have to draft him. Love Kenneth Walker. I was a huge Kenneth Walker fan. Just a bummer. I remember you know. Um, I think he's still great, but then, you know, it's Javante, it's, you know, when we get down this list a little bit and then it's like, all right, well, we're in the seventh round or so, like what guy can I depend on that is going to get the carries? And it's, it's Miles Sanders. Like, that's what I want. I want a guy that I'm sure is going to have a pretty large share of this backfield. And right now the competition is Chuba, which I like. You can get him super cheap. I'm fine with Chuba. They get Blackshear. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he's still on the team. Uh, Tyan Evans. I think they signed him uh, or might have drafted him super late or signed him as a free agent. And now, you know, maybe Mingo gets a couple of carries here and there. And now they're saying um, Visco, you know, might get some running back carries. But, you know, I, I think it's wide open for Miles Sanders. I love the fact that Deuce Staley and him have uh, ties together. Uh, this offensive line's okay. You got a rookie quarterback. The defense is is really good. Um, what can you hang your hat on? You can hang your hat on Miles Sanders. I think the receptions go up. You saw him be pretty good as a rookie. He hasn't quite gotten back there. Deuce Staley talked about that, how they've been working on it all offseason. Uh, they, they view him as a three-down guy. He just has to stay healthy. If he stays healthy, uh, which you know has been a bit of a bugaboo for him, uh, but we saw you know, obviously the Eagles' offensive line is excellent, uh, but – I think you can see, um, you know, similar uh, points per game in the in the 13 to 15 and up to 20 if he's scoring touchdowns and catching more balls, which seems like it's going to be in the realm of possibilities. Um, you know, no fumbles last year, which you like to see um, and, and rank fairly highly um, in a lot of in a lot of categories. You know, 10 plus runs. 31 was good for third um, missed tackles, fourth, uh, 10th yards after contact. Uh, seventh uh, design runs of 15 or more. He was seventh in that pretty good in a lot of, in a lot of categories, fifth and over in total yards, um, seventh in attempts. So, you know, I think he, he could be, you know, up closer to two, three, four in attempts. Cause I think they are probably going to run the shit out of the football. Um, and he just has to stay healthy. So for me, it's been all off season long. I've been, I've been into buying miles because I think it's a pretty safe bet. It's not terribly expensive. Um, and I just, I feel like it's just a really, really solid RB two, um, week in, week out. 
Have you successfully bought him anywhere in any dynasty leagues this offseason? I have not. I do own him in, in two of the leagues where I would have been buying him in. Um, mm-hmm. Big D's a big fan of him. He's the other guy on this podcast. So we're in a couple leagues together. So he has him in, in, in one, or, one or, or maybe more of those. So I have not successfully bought Miles Sanders. I have I sent 111 for him in a, one quarterback, didn't get him. Um, but that's also a guy who doesn't trade that, you know, he's pretty much, I send him trades all the time. It's just a rejected, no counter. You know, I've sent, you know, multiple trades to him and, you know, nothing, nothing back. Um, so the worst know. type of GMs in the world. <laughs> Willing, at least he pays his money and he sets his lineup and he does it, you know, it's whatever he's, he's at least rejecting it. Um, but he, he doesn't complete a whole lot of trades. Mm-hmm. Um, so one eleven, one quarterback, you know, it might be a hair cheap on the, on the cheap side, but you know, I'm, I'm not scared to, uh, add a little something to that, um, and, and try to get miles. Cause I think that team is heading in a direction where, you know, and it's, again, it's situational. I'm not just going to trade for miles Sanders to trade for miles Sanders. If I have a team that I think's in the top four, then I'll probably try to go get miles Sanders and lock up a running back. I feel good about week in week out because again there's not that many you know i could go down and get you know aaron jones but he's on actually in that league he's on jason's team and he's he's decent so he's not going to want to trade me aaron jones so it's all relative to how the league is who has him who wants to get rid of him um but no i haven't successfully pulled off a miles trade but i have been you know i sent out some offers i don't think i've sent anything higher than one 110 in a one quarterback for um miles though so it's interesting that you chose Miles Sanders. I'm definitely lower on him, but I thought it was quite telling that Frank Wright wanted to reunite so badly with him, going from Philly together now to Carolina together, and Frank Wright gave him the bag. I mean, what did he just get? Twenty five million dollars, right? He's the highest paid running back now, correct? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure where the yearly to- total is, but. You know, that was one other thing that you didn't have to worry about. It kind of like I was talking about Chubb. It's two years. We're talking about running back contracts right now and being a little bit of a, you know, uh, sticking point right now. Well, Miles is locked up for for basically three years. There's there's outs just like in there's yeah. Chubb outs for next year. Um, and those guys could sit out whenever. But it makes you feel a little better that they're that they're locked up. Right. Um, so, you know, that's another positive. And, you know, I think I think the the I don't I don't hate the the Panthers this year. Like, I, I think they'll be okay. Like, I, I think they'll be, you know, a middle of the pack team. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll take their lumps, but um, I think Bryce is, is a smart quarterback. Um, and, and I like the staff. I like the people who are going to be there to develop him and bring him along. Um, I, so. I think it might've been number one for running backs in terms of money, uh, like 25 mil. I know Monty was up there with 18, um, but I never questioned Miles Sanders ability to, to run. What did he have around 1250 rushing yards this season? Like he, he was just, he was awesome, man. He, yeah. he was such a good runner. Um, of course, you know, one of the red flags is ever since his rookie campaign where he had about 50 receptions ever since then, man, we've seen a big drop off in receptions and I'm not necessarily sure. I can't necessarily pinpoint the exact reason or, or maybe it's multiple factors. Um, but, but I mean, you know, Miles Sanders, the lead back in Philly the past two years with Hertz, he had 20 receptions and 26 receptions, Yeah, like that, you know, atrocious. And then 78 yards last year, receiving yards, we're talking and 158 yards in 2021, the, the previous year, you know, Miles Sanders is, um, he's just proven to be one dimensional the past two years. And I'm hoping that Frank Wright wants to simply utilize him more. And, uh, I look, uh, I, lo- I actually really do like Bryce Young. I think being a rookie quarterback, you're going to rely on a lot of your teammates, especially the running back that just got paid the bag. Uh, so from a logical, rational standpoint, what you said makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I think you're going to see closer to what that rookie total is on catches just because, you know, again, you know, Bryce isn't necessarily a scrambler, but he can a runner, but he can scramble and get out of trouble, keep his head downfield and, and, you know, check it down uh, to his running back. We saw it plenty with, uh, with Jamar Gibbs. We saw it plenty with Brian Robinson, actually. Um, in the year before that, Brian Robinson's catch totals were, were pretty solid at Bama the last year uh, he was there. So, uh, I think I think Miles Sanders can really be a, a, a really good the best friend for for uh, Bryce Young kind of moving forward as as they're bringing him along, which and I think that's, you know, hey, we brought this we brought a running back in much like your Colts right now who should be offering Jonathan Taylor some more money because, hey, what's the best solution for our for, for our rookie quarterback is is a, a solid running back behind him. And, and no, you don't have to pay him a million dollars, a ton of. A, 
millions and millions of ridiculous amount of money, but make them feel wanted and, and, and take the, take the load off your quarterback a little bit. And I think that's part of the reason why miles is there. They, they reassured him that he's going to be there for a minute. Um, so I think all those things are, are, are trending in, in the positive for miles. Don't even get me started about the cold situation. Well, on the on the cells, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about it. So, OK, okay. Um, you got anything else? Uh, no, let's move on. I'll start with the first cell. Are you cool with that? Uh, well, look, we're going to end this one. We'll start another one. All right, uh, so but I'm going to throw one or two more guys in there. My guy, my guy, Damian Pierce is a big, big buy for me. I've, I've been riding Damian for a while, um, like like everything that they have going on. I like the system. We're going to have a 49ers. Bobby Slowick is coming in six years in San Fran um, in a zone concept, uh, which I think fits Pierce perfectly. Um, and and they're, they're to the moon with Pierce, and they're loving everything about him. I think that's going to be about a 70-30 split between him and Singletary. Um, and, and just the way that guy moved around last year, some of the numbers – aren't exactly as great as you want them to be, but, 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 you know, the eye test, which I know nobody likes, you know, was, was pretty astonishing last year. Uh, he was, he was just a beast. And I think he's, you know, underrated in the passing game. Uh, so really like him. Uh, and then I've actually been, you know, testing the waters on, on James cook right now, who's never really been my favorite, but I've been, he, he, he he's not really a guy that I'm drafting per se, uh, but I'm, he, he's a guy that I'm trading for. So I know those are kind of two different things, but, I think you guys have a guy on your sell list that maybe I feel kind of that same way about. I don't like the ADP necessarily, but I wouldn't mind trading for him. And sometimes I think those are two different things. So let's wrap this up. Uh, appreciate you guys. Make sure you go catch Austin at Austin Abbott FF uh, on all your platforms. Uh, he's putting out shorter form videos over there, plus rankings, all that good stuff. Uh, so make sure you check him out uh, and come subscribe, like, comment below and, and uh, come check out the sell side of this thing. So we appreciate you. Um, we'll catch you next time. Peace.